All right, hey everyone. Uh, I'm Nikita from Chain Patrol. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the, like, the modern phishing attacks, what we've seen in the space right now. What we actively do right now is we do brand protection for various companies. We see a lot of signs of impersonation, fake airdrops, fake NFT mints. And I'm just going to share some of the stuff we've seen in the space right now uh, and how all these, uh, you know, black hats are trying to reach your wallets and drain your funds. So, to begin, like, phishing has evolved into a full-fledged industry. What's happening right now is there are whole organizations, teams developing scam kits, developing, uh, you know, they have telegram chats where they offer you support, and they essentially, what they do is, it's like entire companies dedicated to phishing. What they do is, they build out a scam kit, they do revenue shares where, you know, anybody with like, you know, some just like script kind of kitty that just knows how to run a basic, you know, basic program can just deploy these and essentially steal millions of dollars and pay a 20, around a 20% fee over to these, uh, to these hackers or like the organizations behind these kits. And really these attacks are easier to deploy than ever before. What we're seeing is that, you know, there's GitHub repos, you go on there, you download the code, uh, you join the Telegram chat, or the team members from these organizations will literally like walk you through the setup. It's honestly better support than most of the SaaS services that I pay for. And so, like that's really what we're seeing here is, anybody we can deploy this and start stealing funds, and really the economics get really messed up where, you know, anybody can deploy this, they can earn millions of dollars, and then, you know, teams that are trying to protect themselves don't, like, don't really even have the budgets to cover those kinds of attacks or uh, fight, like, such a vast array of, you know, of just attackers. Uh, so, we're going to talk about a couple of the ways we've seen these attacks happen. So. You know, the most basic thing we see is, is domain cloning. So somebody will go to like a legitimate company like Arbitrum, ZK Sync, or somebody else. They will clone their website. They'll, you know, adjust a little bit of the code, in, in, insert some malicious, um, some malicious code in there using the scam kit, and they will drain your funds. This is happening en masse. We literally see like for some of the companies that we work with, like thousands of domains being registered within one week. And it's just so simple. It's so simple to do. Like you literally just run a couple of scripts and like it's done. And you can on demand spin up new domains. It will literally find new domains for you to register. You can, all of you really need to do is then run the Twitter ad, run a Google ad, uh, and start targeting users. Um, now, we also see how these attacks then reach end users. It's oftentimes bought social media accounts. Uh, we're seeing literally like many of these larger organizations in the space with hundreds if not thousands of impersonators. You can remove 50 of them, you can remove 100 of them. They just keep buying new accounts, keep registering new accounts. And so what we see here is that, you know, no sign of of being verified in the space right now is really real. You know, gold check mark accounts on Twitter go for about 10 to 20K. Uh, you purchase one of those, steal a million dollars, very worth it. And so none of these verification systems that we've seen across different socials right now are really in any way helpful to protect end users. We're also seeing attacks uh, in the same way uh, with, uh, you know, SIM swaps that just taking over legitimate accounts, something I highly recommend. Actually, uh, maybe I can share this somewhere afterwards, but Sam developed a uh, Twitter and Google uh, self-audit guide that everybody should, um, should go through of ensuring you secure your accounts. Basically, don't use your phones for anything uh, that, that's not secure. Uh, and then uh, what we see is also uh, DNS takeover. So essentially, if you're hosting on almost any of the popular DNS providers, you don't really own your domain name. Anybody on support from these domain hosting providers can go and adjust your DNS records. They can, you know, sell, uh, again, it's like, you know, a support, so bribing a support staff at one of these organizations, it could be like 30K, 40K to bribe them. Again, we've seen this happen to quite a few organizations. Actually, I, I believe it happened to Curve, Kyber, uh, and a couple of others in the space where, uh, you know, Essentially, DNS attacks were performed. You're on the legitimate domain. 
And the problem too is like a lot of these protection services will often allow list the legitimate domains and that becomes a challenge because you go on this domain, you think everything's fine uh, and then you're still losing your funds. And I think that's also when it comes to protection why both these block list approaches but also simulations and kind of understanding what's happening in the code is important to kind of be working together. Um, and then, yeah, and then just impersonating fake support. Like you'll get emails, you'll get, uh, you know, you'll get stat impersonators on social media, and they will all try to essentially, again, steal your funds, reach out to legitimate users. They'll pretend to be regular people that also just said, hey, like I, I had the same issue as you, and but contact this like support email, and I'll be, you know, they'll help you out, and then it's a fake. Uh, what we're seeing in the space, obviously, like, you know, seed phrase theft surprisingly has not gone away no matter how many times we tell people don't input your seed phrase into, into uh, malicious sites. They keep staying there. Um, malicious transactions is a constantly ongoing battle. There's a lot of players in the space working on better simulations, working on better detection, um, and it's kind of an arms race with these Hackers, malware, if you get that on your computer, you're kind of, you're just screwed, you know, you're, there's, there's not really a lot you can do. And then there's these even more difficult attacks coming out where you have things like pig butchering and these other areas where, you know, it looks like a legitimate investment site. Those I think are the trickiest to deal with because there is no malicious code immediately on there. It's entirely really like a social engineering scam. You go there and they create an entirely legitimate looking company. You can input your funds. And you know they literally will hold on to this money for you. They might even like add some of it sometimes to make it look like you're legitimately gaining like you know like five percent APR or something. And they will do this for months, for uh, maybe years, and even in some cases I haven't seen those yet, but months for sure. Uh, and basically over this time, they will go ahead and lead the user into believing that they're earning funds, and eventually they will just essentially just. Rug, it's a form of rug pull in a way, really. And so what we're seeing here is that, you know, we really need both a mix of on-chain and off-chain data to catch these attacks. We have, uh, you know, a lot of traditional ways of finding these, like we run image recognition, we run uh, various models that analyze the content of sites and see, like, who are they impersonating? You know, there's really, like, a you know, the Web3 space isn't that huge yet that we can actually quite quickly tell who is the legitimate project being, uh, being impersonated here by running some image recognition and other areas. Uh, but then you also need the picture on the on the on-chain side as well to understand where are the funds flowing, where are the, uh, you know, wh what are the malicious addresses involved. We're looking at some areas where we analyze these sites and we see, okay, here's all the addresses, here's where the funds are flowing. We're seeing also scammers try to now uh, pepper their sites with a bunch of legitimate addresses as well to get thing, you know, legitimate areas flagged um, and kind of mess with our systems. But this is where you know, getting the full picture is really important to understand where the scammers' funds are going, uh, what wallet draining kits are involved, and you, you'd be surprised. Uh, oftentimes, you can you can catch quite a lot quite a lot of attacks in this way because sometimes the scam kit, like like the. Um, you know, it's only like one hop to like the drainer's address. Uh, sometimes the, the addresses are literally right in the HTML of the website. And so, uh, you know, these kinds of attacks are, uh, you, you know, you can catch them from analyzing the site and from looking at the flow of funds. Uh, and then you can also just look at, you know, an analysis of just what the site is trying to do. Something is as basic as like check for inputting seed phrase is like super simple, but like no site should realistically ask you for that. Um, and then really like to stop these attacks, what we really need to do is like this collaborative effort that's been growing in the space. Like the security data needs to flow faster than the attackers. In, you know, traditional Web2 security, like, you know, especially around impersonations, what we've seen is like the standards are like, okay, well, a day, two days, you know, those takedowns can be like, okay, um, you know, because, you know, a user might go to like a fake like Costco website and purchase like a chair and like they lost like a hundred dollars or something, right? They're not losing a million dollars from a scam that was live like two minutes ago, right? And so that's what we're really trying to build out both at Chain Patrol with the Security Alliance and with 
a lot of the other collaborators we're working with in the space here, is this data needs to reach all the user's point of contacts within minutes of the scam going live, within seconds. Because realistically, if we have the evidence, if we can prove that this is a malicious site, why should anybody on the internet fall for this scam even seconds after we have this data? And so this is something that we've uh, had quite a lot of success in with collaborators across the space. Uh, we've been working with, you know, uh, with MetaMask, with ETH Phishing Detect, we've been working with Coinbase, um, Blowfish as well for, uh, for distribution across Phantom and other locations. I uh, you know WalletGuard and a Pocket Universe too and like a bunch of the, uh, you know, a bunch of the extensions in the space and I think what's happening right now is we're seeing these scammers, they're pissed off. They are pissed off, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've seen we've seen um, we've seen a lot of um, you know people trying to like DDoS these groups, trying to get into them, and it's it's the system's working. The system's working. We still have a long way to go. There's still millions in, do in dollars being lost, but it's getting better, and we're it's it's possible to do this. And really, you know, I want to finish off this by saying that the transparency and interoperability is the key to real-time security. What we're doing here is we're making security data not be walled off by all these different, like, you know, different, you know, protections and being each person has a piece of the puzzle. Really what we need to do is have this data shared across the entire network because that's the only really way we're gonna protect users. If somebody has a piece of the information and, you know, it's not being shared out there, what ends up happening is that users will be impacted. They're gonna lose their money and what we need is not just transparency for the sake of, you know, spreading this data as quickly as possible, but also for law enforcement cases. Um, you know, we've been talking to some, some other folks in the security space, especially when it comes to bringing in, you know, law enforcement to recover these funds. And oftentimes these cases just go cold because they don't even know where to start. You know, some security researcher has some data on what happened on chain. Somebody has some info on the website. Some, then the, the user reported in an entirely different system. And so, you know, when law enforcement gets involved, it's like, where, like, they're like, where do I even start? Okay, I'm filing this off to the side. Like, unfortunately, like there's just not enough details to process a case. And so the more we can get all the data kind of gathered in, um, in a way that's like shared and is able to be presented in a good way uh, to law enforcement, the better we chance we have of even recovering funds, of potentially freezing stolen funds as well, and making sure that you know in the end users are protected, and in the cases that they aren't, we can at least you know help recover these funds. Uh, yeah, that's 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 it. That's it for the talk. I just think you know let's share the data as much as we possibly can and stop these scammers. Maybe we have one question, and then we move to the next talk. Any question on there? Yes. So how, how do you see the sort of phishing attacks evolving over the next 12 months? What, where, where do you see their, like obviously you talked about obfuscation, but any, any other areas you're, you're sort of looking at? Yeah, so I mean, over the next 12 months, I think a lot of what we're seeing is uh, one, the website just getting more and more sophisticated. Uh, what we keep getting told is that you know, the scam sites look more real than the actual domains of these companies. Uh, I think image generation, AI generation as well. Uh, we're seeing a lot of scams on YouTube appearing as well where there's full guides, it looks like an influencer. Uh, you know, I think what we're gonna see is that we're gonna see not just impersonations of the organizations themselves, but entirely legitimate users, influencers that you're following, that are, you know, you think you trust, and they are guy, they are the ones that are targeting you to these to these phishing sites. Because um, you know, we're already seeing the rise of virtual influencers. Soon we won't see like who's real, who's not real, and anything they guide you to could be an attack. Uh, actually, another just another point on that is more and more crypto companies are getting, um, or, or sorry, more and more traditional advertisement companies like Google and others are opening up to allow crypto companies to advertise to, and I think that's going to be a disaster because right now, like most companies were banned from advertising. Now, when you're going to have a lot of new ads coming in, everything's going to be mixed in. I, I think it's going to be a big mess. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much.